This video made possible by the Global Innovation Exchange. Visit gixnetwork.org to learn more. Hello, GeekWire. I'm Ninian Wang. And I'm Christina Kwan. And we are here from Engineering at Niantic to talk to you about Pokemon Go and the future of augmented reality. So a refresher for some of you on augmented reality, AR. If you have seen Snapchat filters, that is augmented reality. Snapchat is letting users augment their camera feed and their photos to have rabbit ears, to look like a puppy, kitten, zombie. That is a form of augmented reality. Many of you may also have heard of IKEA, which is allowing customers to overlay IKEA furniture onto a camera feed or photo of their real world home, their living room, bedroom, visualizing what IKEA furniture would look like in their own home. That is also augmented reality. And we're here from Niantic, the makers of Pokemon Go. Some history about our company. Our founders were the creators of Google Earth 14 years ago allowing users to add information onto real-world physical locations. In 2011, Niantic combined that with gaming elements to form Ingress. Now, there have been many video games over decades, but those video games would use a digital chessboard as the backdrop or a virtual environment. Ingress uses the real world as the game board. And this was very popular. In 2016, Niantic took the learnings from that and combined it with an IP that the world loves. And that brought us Pokemon Go, which has earned over a billion dollars in revenue and has an actively growing user base today. Next, we will be taking those learnings, innovating on them, and bringing you Harry Potter Wizards Unite. The motto of Niantic is adventures on foot with others. Now let's look at that a bit. There are many types of adventures that people may have. It might be while sitting at home. It might be adventures while driving. We focus on adventures that people have while walking, while they're on foot. And we actually measure kilometers walked by our users as one of the key metrics. The second part is adventures on foot with others. And we think that many of life's experiences are better when shared with our friends, new friends or loved ones. So we want to have our products bring people together in the real world. And these are all photos that you see of users bonding with each other as they play our games. Now let's talk about augmented reality. The second part of that, reality. So we, as we all know, in its pinnacle moments, reality can feel magical, whether it's a spectacular sunset, an exciting concert, or coming home on a snowy day. Those can feel like magical moments. And we want to use technology to augment every day to feel magical. If you think about walking in the park on a normal day, how would you feel if you actually came upon a real-life fairy or gnome? That's pretty exciting. So we want augmented reality to give you that sense when you're walking in the park. Now, one key learning about that is in order for that to happen, the virtual world needs to feel extremely closely aligned with the real world. If that alignment does not happen, not only will it not feel magical, it will actually feel jarring and broken. And now, to take us on the behind-the-scenes look at how to achieve that alignment, here's Christina. Pokemon Go is a map-based game that brings the Pokemon world to our world. In this picture, there's a woman on a real-life hike. We make her experience even more magical when we, she sees this Pokemon flying towards her as she plays Pokemon Go. In order to make this type of magic happen, we have to make sure the virtual world matches the real world as closely as possible. On the left is what you see when you first open up Pokemon Go. 
the woman playing this game is located at a real world intersection and we reflect her same position in the game. As she explores the real world, she also explores the virtual world and different Pokemon show up on the map depending on where she is. Imagine that I'm in a park playing Pokemon Go and on the map, a Pikachu appears right in front of me. I click the Pikachu because I want to enter an encounter with it and potentially catch it. Before, when we opened up this encounter screen, we had more rudimentary technology, so we replaced the background with the camera feed. Although this showed the Pokemon in a real life scenario, it could potentially lead to slightly unnatural visualizations like the picture in the middle. Recently, we improved our technology, so we actually anchor the Pokemon onto the ground so we can walk closer to it or around it just like if it was a real character. It takes more than just the camera to make the AR experience feel more real. When you encounter Pokemon in Pokemon Go, it's important that they make sense with the actual real world environment they're found in. We do this by using geographic data to determine what type of location the player is in and making corresponding Pokemon appear, such as fish type Pokemon showing up near lakes and oceans. Another aspect of the real world that's always changing is weather. This is a real player's character out in the world as they're looking out on a city. It, we make the experience even more magical when the weather they see right in front of them matches what they see virtually in the game. We use weather data not only to show these different changes in the in-game client, but also to have different game behaviors such as snowy Pokemon appearing when it's snowing. By using these different types of data, we're able to create an immersive experience where we create the illusion that Pokemon really exist and live among us. This was one of the results of the effort we put into this. This is Bellevue Park when Pokemon Go first launched. And these are actual people playing Pokemon Go. When one person yells Pikachu, hundreds of people run toward it because everyone shares the same experience. Because everyone acts like Pokemon are really in the park, it makes Pokemon seem like it's really something that we can experience in our world as opposed to just in a story. Because of this type of behavior, it was natural for us to add more social features to the game since people made real life connections with each other. Raids was one of our first social features that we made. In a raid, players meet a designated real world location and battle and catch a Pokemon together. Players could only catch a Pokemon if they actually defeat it together. So the more players that gather together, the higher the chance that they can beat the Pokemon and potentially catch it. This was the result of our design. We saw hundreds of players gathering to do legendary raids with each other. Players form real life friendships and communities based around raids. And we found this to be one of our most popular features. This made it natural to continue to add social features to our game. This summer, we added friends and social features. We added this to make it so people have more ways to adventure with other people that they meet and their friends and family. Although a lot of other games have these types of friends and social features, Pokemon Go is an AR game, so we had to make it different by integrating real world locations in the gameplay for a more immersive 
experience. One of the features we added was gifting. In the real world, people like to give gifts to each other, so we wanted to create a way for people to also do that in game. Gift boxes were inspired by real life postcards where, where people go to designated locations that are special to them, buy a postcard and send it to their friends as memorabilia. memorabilia. Players could also do this in the game by going to designated real world locations called Pokestops which represent special and unique places in the real world. In this example, it's an octopus statue that someone might think is really cool. <laughs> As you can see, when a player sends it to the friend, it contains a picture and some information about the real world location. We've seen a lot of players have emotional attachments to their gift boxes because of this. And that brings us to where we are today. Thank you, Christina. So we've designed these experiences around people and places, and they have been incredibly popular despite what we'll one day look back on as rudimentary hardware. There are battery power limitations. The user needs to look down at their phone frequently. And we think that over time, these barriers will be removed by technology, which will unleash more abilities to create AR experiences. Now let's move away from actual gameplay and start thinking about the future. Here is a current state of augmented reality. During most of this video, this Pikachu yellow creature looks great in the scene. But there are some times when it's hard to know whether to put the Pikachu before objects or behind objects. And we just talked about the magic of integrating these digital objects into reality and how it needs to feel seamless as though the character is really there. We, can, we don't want to suspend disbelief of the user. Here is a video from Niantic's research department. This uses a single lens camera, the same footage that we just saw of people walking around. This research can infer depth information from the scene based on the single lens camera. Now let's look at how Pikachu blends into the landscape you see that when people walk in front of the Pikachu, it appears behind them. It appears in front of objects that it should and behind other objects when it should be behind them. This increases the sense of immersion and makes the virtual world feel more magical when overlaid on our world. Here's another example, many of the current day AR experiences are single user. As we discussed, some of the pinnacle experiences in life are better when shared with others. Our AR innovation allows for multiplayer shared experiences. In this video, these people are seeing the same things on their phone as each other. When one person sees these laser beams moving through the air and colliding with each other, other people are seeing the same virtual laser beams. And this is synchronized in real time. By being able to see the same virtual objects as each other in real time, this allows us to create multiplayer AR experiences. This year, we announced the Niantic Augmented Reality Platform, where we would like to work with companies like yours to bring your experiences and your dreams of augmented reality to life. So we would love to talk to people like you. You can follow us on Twitter. We are at Niantic Labs. Um, this is my email address. So if you want to learn more about augmented reality, you can email me. And we hope that you will make everyday life magical with augmented reality.